guys and welcome to part 14 of our Construct Top Down series. Now if you guys can remember from our last video on this series we did the transitions which is pretty rad with regards to the player going in and out of rooms and we tackled that. We've tackled quite a lot in the series. I encourage you to go and look at it from part one straight through if you're new year. And if you are new year, always remember to hit the subscribe. Now today we're going to be doing the collectibles and opening up some boxes and interacting that way with coins and hearts, etc. Now I thought let's start off with the collectibles and we're gonna spawn some objects. And then from there, we're gonna show you how to collect those maybe in the next video and see how that sort of works with the, the dictionaries and how we can store the coins and how the hearts that you pick up in fact heals the player. And we can show that on a HUD movement as well. So we'll save that for an extra video. Right, so currently, as you can see, I've done a few different things since our last video. I've gone ahead and created a crate, very simple sprite, given it a name box, and I've added two animations to it, a open and a closed little animation. Right, so I encourage you to do that. I'm, I've just, this is just to speed the video up that I'm not doing it on screen essentially, because we all know how to do this based on the videos that I've made. Secondly, in our object bank, as you can remember, I've gone ahead and created a drop items. Now this will have whatever it is. So I've gotten two, yeah, specifically I've got a coin and I've got a heart and we're gonna be making use of that spawning out of our current box. So when I interact with the box, we're gonna spawn those randomly and let them jump out and then essentially those are the items that we will collect. And we can use this sort of function throughout the game and we can add multiple types of items and we can random or whatever it is that you choose to use. I just easier this way, putting it all into one specific sprite called the drop items opposed to just hearts and coins, etc. Now, next thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna add this to our effects file because that's where it is. We've got our flies here, as you can remember that video. So we're gonna go ahead and just add a new group and we're gonna call it a drop. Let's call it drop items. Okay, so we know that all the code essentially, as you guys know, sits underneath here, and then we will make sure that that's called respectively. So the first thing I need to do is obviously create a function that is going to do the drop function. All right, so we're gonna call this function, let's call it drop, and we're gonna go items. Okay, so that we know that that is it. Then I need to add three local variables, parameters if you want to call it, that needs to be passed through. So the first one we're going to need to do is, let's go add perimeter, and we're going to call that one create x, and we'll keep that as a number, and then the next one we're going to need to do is create uh, y, as you guessed it, and that's going to be a number as well. And the last one is the repeat count. So we add another perimeter, Let's call it repeat uh, count. Okay. On how many times we need to repeat it. Okay, so there's our function. And before we do that, let's ensure we've got another added sub condition, which I want to do system. And then we want to basically repeat, repeat, repeat. And then we're going to repeat the count, obviously. Okay, so that we don't get every time that he interacts with it, only the time that is passed. Okay. So repeat, repeat times, perfect. Right, so the next thing we're gonna do is create the object. So yeah, we're gonna go system and we're gonna click on create object. So we're gonna go create object and we're gonna say it's our gem or whatever you wanna call it, your hearts and so forth. Uh, as you guys know, and I've gone and called mine drop items and I'm gonna put it on the layer, which is going to be my stage layer. So let's go and put in stage layer. Now you can keep this at layer zero if yours is currently set but mine is called stage, so let's just keep it at that. Keep it at its name. Okay, so I've got, you can see a uh, stage is my layer name of which, and the transitions and shadows is above that. So let's keep it on the stage layer. And then I wanna create it on basically, um, really just on itself. Uh, so we can go create X on these coordinates that we're gonna be passing, and then create Y. Okay, that's important, that's gonna be passed through this function. Okay, so that'll create the options. So I'm gonna obviously first do that and then we will jump into getting to sort of scatter move. In fact, why not? Let's go and do that. Let's do that first. So on the drop items in my object bank, I've gone ahead and added a behavior, which is just the eight directional behavior. I've set it to 80, acceleration to 1000, which is practically the default, and I've removed the default control. So make sure that you add this behavior. What I want to achieve here essentially is that when you open this box, uh, in our dungeon. When you go ahead and open that box, we want to basically ensure that the items sort of scatter and jump out and maybe move a little bit to the left to the right. So 
let's go ahead and do almost like you know when we hit the player we created that that um, sin and the um, the cause uh, movement with the eight directional I'm going to do very much the same thing so let's go back to our effects and let's add that so we're going to go here and we're going to go drop items drop items and we're going to set the vector let's say that is x and yeah we can just basically go ahead and type in exactly what we need so yeah we're going to go first cause random because we want it to be a random um, random 360 obviously 360 close that off and we can multiply that by self dot a directional and this max speed that we set okay so that'll be the um, that'll be the x-axis and then we can do the same for the y-axis and this obviously we just change to this, uh, this line and this uh, okay there we go fantastic so now we've got those two sets so this essentially will you know call it random and then sort of scatter randomly um, across that box if that makes sense then we just want to go and set the animation uh, let's go to the drop item drop items set animation which is going to be set look for the animation set animation and yeah basically what we're going to do is something very different we're going to let it choose the one that we want so we're going to go choose okay and then we're going to choose between that so you can randomly pick between that so the first one is going to be coin and then the next one will be heart and i think we've only got to those two theoretically so let's just close that off correctly and there it is so coin and heart and done right so that is our function now we need to create the you could say the interaction between the crate and that so we're going to just drop here as well we could add this to the player uh, player function here which probably is better we've got player create doors so let's go and actually do that here. let's go and create a new one and call it a new group obviously we call it player let's say player um what's always some player player drop items or maybe just player interaction whatever give it the name that you guys prefer okay so yeah we're going to give it a animation a sort of collision event if you want to call it that now currently we can do one of two things. We can either, when the player comes in, that he, he hits the box maybe with the little sword um, to open it, or if he just touches it. So let's go with the hit because maybe that just makes a little bit more sense. So yeah, we're gonna go player, and we're gonna go, uh, we have to check the animation, obviously. He's playing animation. Let's just go to playing. He's playing animation. And then we're gonna have to choose the melee animation um, that we have so before i do that because we need to know the direction let's just do the melee attack up well we'll have to be melee attack any direction theoretically so let's go back to let's say player attack and let's just see what we've done here you see we've got the melee attack and the direction being passed so let's go ahead and copy that to make it a lot easier so we're going to go yeah again add on uh, animation player is playing playing animation so that we know it doesn't matter which direction it is we know that if this animation is playing then go ahead and call that function so yeah we're going to go quite simple really we're going to go play the call the function and this function is called drop items and yeah we need to pass a few things so now you know we've got these three things that we sort of passing which is um, the x the y to where this coins are going to spawn and then the repeat how many times in terms of how many items in there so yeah, I want to put an int variable and I want to make this random between, let's say, zero and maybe maybe two. So yeah, we're going to go random and then we will say between between two. And you, the higher you make this number, the more things it'll drop, um, essentially. And then the next part here on the, on the, on the create x uh, variable to where we want it to spawn is obviously going to be our box. Now currently I've named mine box, so I'm going to go box, as you can see, box.x. And then I'm going to go box, box dot y. Right, fantastic. So let's go ahead and test that and then see if that really works. So if we go ahead and click play, he has an item, nothing should happen. If I click it, the box should open. It might spawn out without opening the box. And there you can see all the little things are jumping out. So a little bit too much. So let's go back and do a few things. When we touch box, we need to obviously do the first thing box we need to change the animation and that is change the 
the frame because that's the wrong frame. So let's go ahead and set frame to, I think it was one, let's go set it to one. Let's just double check and make sure that the box itself is in fact, that frame of open is in fact zero. So we need to set that to zero. So we're gonna say set frame to zero, which will be done, which is fantastic. All right, so now we need to add two other conditions because as you saw, that just keeps spawning because it's not checking, it's playing all the frames and it's doing on every single frame. So the first one I wanna do is add another condition. And I wanna to check to make sure that the box is in fact closed because that's logic. So let's make sure that the box frame is equal to one. That is closed. When we touch it, we play the attack and it's closed, go ahead and change it to open. That's what we did there. So now we know for sure that you can only get items out of a box that's in fact closed and not open as you saw. The next thing we want to do is add a condition is the player animation. We want to compare that that is also set to zero. We don't want it to, in other words, only the very first frame as it hits spawn an item. Now, bearing in mind, guys, this is a random end count. So this can be zero. It means that people could open boxes potentially, which is what, what would we want, and there could be nothing in it. So let's go ahead and run this theory. So here we go with our little player. Oh, there's a random coin for us, which is pretty rad. I'm going to go back out again and come back in. And there's a random heart, also at a random position, which is what we wanted. I'm going to go back in again, and there's another coin. And at some point, it's going to give me an empty box. And there's my empty box. Okay. So that is it for today's tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to be doing the picking up of those items and applying it to the player's health, etc. On the HUD screen here, and also the coins, and show you how that works with the dictionaries. And then you will give you a sort of full gist of the game itself. And then I think our last video is going to be more in tailoring, setting up all the animations, ensuring that things are just smooth with the attacks and, and things that we've done where we might have rushed things, making sure that there's little sounds for collecting of coins, just a round or finishing. But as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.